Hey, welcome to Children's Ministry. As always, it is a joy to know that you are online, that you are watching, you are staying connected. So let's get ready and do what we do each and every week. We're going to get our Bibles, our tablets, our phones, what you read the Word of God on, and we're going to get into our message that He has for us on this day. And let Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come just to thank you for this day. We give you honor and glory for all that shall be said, all that shall be accomplished through your word on today. We pray that each and every one that's tuned in, that's listening, your children, Father, as you speak to their hearts, God, give them revelational truths as they learn of you and they know how to apply your word to their lives, that they are producing fruit. Hallelujah, God. And we thank you and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank kids. Let's begin. We got a lot on today that we're going to go through and discuss. So turn in your Bibles to John chapter four. And while you're going there, I'm going to read your memory verse for this week. I know you're reading and studying and meditate day and night upon your memory verse. And this week we're going to be in the book of Luke for our memory verse. And it's Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. It reads, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. Again, the memory verse, Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10, that the son of man and who is the son of man, faith kids, it's Jesus. Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost. And that's your verse for this week. Study it and meditate it. Read it this week and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you regarding this scripture. And so as you are there in John chapter four, we'll get into our message upon today. So we're going to be talking about tell somebody, tell somebody. So we're going to find out what we're going to be telling. What are we saying to somebody? And in John chapter four, we're picking up with the story. I know you've heard about the woman at the well. And that's a lot of times what we say and we reference this passage of scripture is the woman at the well. So we're going to talk about this woman at the well and her encounter with Jesus. And so in Luke, John chapter four and verse number six, let's read there. And I'll give you just a little bit of background. So Jesus and his disciples, they were traveling and they were on their way to um, Galilee. And so as they were going to Galilee, they went through this town of Samaria. And that's where they met this woman. So in verse number six, let's pick it up there. It says, Jacob well was there. And as you know, we know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this was the, uh, the land that God had promised Abraham and to his descendants. And so there, when Jacob was there, they set it aside and they had this well and they called it Jacob's well. So Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. And that's very important, about noontime. So soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because the disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised. She was surprised for, for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritan. And she said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? So here we, the woman is meeting Jesus at the well. He's sitting there. He's, the disciples are gone to get food and he's there alone. And the woman comes to get water. And they said in the reference in the scripture, because everything is important, that it was about noontime. And why was noontime significant? Because that's the time of the day that no one else is really at the well. So this woman is coming to the well when there's no one there. So we think when we go to places, we got friends, we got family, people come with us. We going over here to the store or we going wherever we're going. We most of the time we go and you know, we got people that comes with us, but she's going to this well during this time that no one is there. And why is that? 
because she has been an outcast among people. She doesn't have many friends. So she wants to, and then pe the people are in the town, they're, you know, they're talking about her because, you know, life choices that she has made, you know, we make choices that are not of God. So she's made choices. So they're talking about her. So she doesn't even want to go to the well to get water when anyone's there. So everyone pretty much goes and get up early and they go early and get the water. So she goes at a time that she knows no one is really there. So she comes up there and Jesus is there and he says, give me a drink. And she asked him, why are you asking me to give you a drink? Because I'm a Samaritan and you a Jew and y'all don't even talk to us. Y'all don't have no communication with us. You, you know, why are you talking to me now? So let's go on fake kids and find out what else is going on in this story with the woman at the well? So verse number 10, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift that God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I will give you living water. So Jesus said, you don't even know who you talking to. I can give you living water. And besides the woman says, do you think you're greater than our ancestors? He says, this is Jacob's well. Do you not know what this well is? How you got better water than Jacob's water that's been here? So Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life please sir the woman said give me this water then i'll never be thirsty again and i won't have to come here to get water so the woman said okay if you got this water this bed i'm not gonna have to thirst anymore because you know the water from the well you, as we drink any water we need more she says and i've got water you have some water that i don't have to thirst anymore and that so i don't have to come over here to this well i don't have to be bothered about coming to the people and seeing others here and they're talking about me and, and what just like what what do we think about as when as people go to work at like your parents, we think about, you know, if he says, uh, I'ma do all of this here, I'ma bless you, and then you don't even have to go to work no more. We'd be like, Yeah, give me that because I don't have to get up and go to work. Or you hear people, you know, in the world, they'd be like, When I win the lotto, then I don't have to work anymore. So that's like this. And maybe you say, it, they say, well, we'll give you all the knowledge and give you all the wisdom and you're going to know everything. And then you'd be like, okay, if I know everything and I have all this knowledge, then I don't need to go to school anymore. I can just, you know, I know everything. What can the teacher teach me? So this is kind of like what she was saying, you know, okay, well, if this is going to do all of this, then I don't need to go to the well anymore so let's continue to read on and what's going on in this lady's life because she's missing it right like we would be missing it thinking okay i don't have to work no more she missed it because that's just not what he's talking about he's not talking about you know water physically to drink he's talking about eternal life in him so let's continue to read faith kids in verse number 16 it says go and get your husband jesus told her all right, let's continue. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus says, you're right. You don't have a husband. So already Jesus is letting her know that I know, that I know you. So he's like, he tells us, he knows us. No matter what we've done, no matter what he knows us. And he goes on, he says, for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man that you're living with. Now, you certainly spoke the truth again. So speak the truth. God knows us, but we speak the truth. So the woman says, I don't hate. She was honest and open with Jesus at the well, not even knowing who he was. But because when we encounter God and when we have that come in his presence, we speak the truth because he knows. So she went on to say, you know, I don't even have a husband. And he said, you're right. You had five husbands and the one that you have now, that's not even your husband. And she was like, huh, I, this man knows everything about me. So let's continue. The, she said, sir, the woman said, you must be 
a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews are in the city of Jerusalem in the only place of worship? Let's keep going down to uh, verse 21. So Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will be no longer matter whether you worship the father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship while we Jews know all about him for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming indeed, and it is here now, the time of salvation. So Jesus is letting her know the time is now for salvation for her. When true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth, the father is looking for those who will worship him that way. So we're to worship God in spirit of the truth. He's telling her, this is the time has come for salvation. You are to work like she was saying, you know how the the letters that they were doing and the way that they were worshiping and praising God at doing that time. He says the time has come now, the time of salvation, the time has come for the true worshipers to worship God. They worship him. We worship him in spirit and in truth for God is spirit. And so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the woman says, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything. And Jesus said unto her, I am the Messiah, the one that you think, know, have been learning about that says he's coming. It is I. I am he. I am the one. I am the Messiah. So just then, the, then the disciples comes back and the woman left her water jar besides the well and came back to the village telling everyone so let's look at that it says after she encountered with jesus he told her everything about her she forgot about getting water at the well and she immediately went back into the city and start telling everyone about this man who had told her everything. Now she forgot about that they don't like her, that they were talking about her. That was not even her concern. Her concern was, I need to tell somebody that this man is the Messiah. He's the one. So let's continue, go all the way down to verse number 39. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything. That's what we're doing. Our testimonies, faith kids, we're to tell somebody about God in our life, what he has been doing, what he is doing in our lives. And when we tell others how God is moving and what he's doing in our lives, it's a testimony to others that they too can come and believe in Jesus, that they would come to know God and Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So that's what we're supposed to do. We even have at, in, in church, we, Pastor Stan has victory stories that we're able to tell somebody. It's not about that. We're just saying, oh, I got this and I did that and the Lord did it. No, it's to be a testimony to others what God is doing, that they too will be encouraged, that they too would come to know Jesus. So that's why we're having victory stories. That's why we're to tell somebody of what good things that God is doing in our lives. And you also, fake kids, you are to tell others the goodness of the Lord, how he saved you. That's what we're doing. We're telling somebody. Just like when good things are happening, when you make good grades or you did in sports, maybe you hit a basket or whatever great thing that's happening and you're excited about it and you're like, I need to go do what? Tell somebody. So just like that. And when you want to tell somebody about your grades or that you hit the shot or whatever, you're excited. That's how it is when we're telling others about what God is doing in our lives. We are excited to let them know of the goodness of God and what he's doing for us and what he's doing through us. And so that they can be encouraged themselves so they can say, yeah, God did it for us. God can do it for me. Or who is this God? You're so 
peaceful and you're so whatever. I need this that you have and it's only through God. So say yes, want to encourage you this week, meditate upon your memory verse in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And also think about you can be a witness to others. You can go and do what, fake kids? Tell somebody about God and how he is in your life. All right, fake kids, I am so glad you're here. We'll see you on next week. Have a blessed week.